Almost anybody that is trying to get in uh, better physical condition, to get healthier, to get trimmer, uh, and to feel better about themselves, almost anybody that has tried to do this has tried to do it many times. They've had many uh, attempts at this. They've had some moderate successes uh, led by relapse and, and uh, failure and frustration. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to try to figure out the solution to the mystery of why it is that this is so difficult to do, what is it that needs to be done, and what, where you need to point your compass, so what, what road you need to walk to make this a, a, a reality. The, one of the things that happens is that people believe that they already know the answer uh, as to why it is that they need to lose, uh, or how it is that they're going to lose weight. They believe that they already know, and they think that the solution is actually quite simple. They think that they need to eat less food, and they need to exercise more. If they do those two things, then they will lose weight. And I can tell you that if that is what you've tried to do, then you have lost your mind whenever that has happened. Because what happened is, is you wind up with a ferocious hunger drive, great frustration, and this becomes nothing other than an exercise in supreme willpower. And that's not going to work. The, uh, you are not designed to have this problem. This is an unnatural problem. And it's going to require for us to actually understand it to remove the obstacles. And it is very possible to do. It can be done. I've successfully helped people, and so have many other of my colleagues have helped people uh, do this uh, very effectively over the years. You don't need to be doing what everybody thinks you need to be doing, which is to what I call eat under the hunger drive. You do not have to eat less. Uh, you don't have to push yourself away from the table. You don't have to fr frustrate yourself and consider yourself that you did a good job today if you didn't eat very much. If you didn't eat very much today and you thought you just did a good job, I will tell you, you just made a big mistake. You see, this is somebody else telling you that if you under eat, you're making a big mistake. And he's coming at this from a different angle to uh, you know, other people that have mentioned that, like, you know, or, or the Minnesota study, for instance. It's coming at it from a completely different angle, but he's making the same conclusion. If you've under eaten today, trying to lose weight, trying to battle your genetic and natural systems, you're making a big mistake and you've got to stop it. You just set yourself up for failure tomorrow. I want people to be very comfortable about how it is that they go about this process of losing weight. Uh, there are challenges involved here, but we can meet those challenges and you can uh, uh, accomplish what you want to accomplish without great stress and strain. There are three species on this planet currently that are having problems with their weight. Three. What are they? Dogs, cats, human beings. They all live in human houses. Now, isn't this just a little bit suspicious? So when you start hearing about all the wacky reasons why you think you have weight problems, that they talked about on Oprah or they talk into some shrink's office, I want you to back the camera up and look at all of nature and think to yourself, hmm, there's three species that are having the problem. Three, not one, there's three. And all of them live in the same place. So we got three species in trouble and we're one of them. So what we're not gonna see is the solution for birds having a problem. Birds aren't having a problem. But I suppose if they did, and they were to go on Oprah, or they were gonna talk to uh, various assorted experts, they might think that what they need to do is to eat less worms and do more exercise. That's what might happen, but guess what? We don't have any birds with that problem, so I'm not understanding why we don't have birds uh, waddling around with a problem. Uh, there's plenty of food out there, by the way, and when you look at animals in natural habitats where there's plenty of food, they do not get overweight. So even though I've heard discussion among very learned, very bright people in the last 20 years looking at this problem, one of the arguments that they will make is that they will say the problem is we don't exercise enough and we don't have to work hard enough for our food and there's plenty of food around where there used to be deprivation so therefore people are just eating too much food. Ladies and gentlemen, that is nonsense. 
All you have to do is watch animals in their natural habitat where there's plenty of food. If there is a great deal of food in the environment, the animals do not get fat. What do you think happens when there's a lot of food in the environment that it is not hard to get to? They reproduce more. That's what they're designed to do. They are here as gene reproduction devices. And so as a result, if they don't have to work as hard to get their food, they are going to default then to the, the important biological job of reproducing genes, which is exactly what they do. So they don't wind up, you don't wind up with big, you know, overweight crocodiles, you wind up with more crocodiles. So there's something wrong with what we're seeing with our special three species that doesn't have to do with the fact that the food is plentiful or that they don't have to work that hard for it. That's not what's happening. Something else is happening and we're going to find what the root of that problem is. So what I love about this, so what I love about this part of this video is that um, he's really done his homework and what he says really hits home. His model of weight gain and food addiction is the opposite to the trauma model. So there's two big models in addiction. One is trauma. That some kind of trauma in your life, pre, you know, young child, caused you to become an addict. And then there's the biochemical model, which states that basically you're addicted to the substance. This one is all the way in the biochemical area and no room for trauma. And there's powerful arguments to support this. In the main, I tend towards this, but it's more complicated than that. Because, because when you have a trauma in your life, it makes you unable to apply the knowledge that you're, see, that you're hearing here. So when you see someone who's overweight and they watch a video like this and they, they get an aha and they just change, they're not in this situation due to a trauma. They're here because they just haven't had the education to eat. But other people could get this information and even become more addicted. So that's why I don't completely rely on the, the, the anti-trauma model and it's all about the food. But I also don't subscribe completely to the trauma model. But what you can take away from this, what you can take away from this video, is that it is not the abundance of food, it's not the laziness, it's not something that's, that's happened to you or been done to you. All what's happened here is that a very highly unnatural and calorifically dense food has been made available in your environment where your body has not adapted to consume that food. And because of this type of food, you've got fat because you're genetically susceptible to gaining weight based on these high calorific foods. Because let's face it, there are people in this environment who eat these foods and they're not being stimulated in the same way. They eat the food and they go, oh, that was pretty good. Nah, yeah, feel fine going to carry on and there's other people who eat that food and be like oh my god I just want more or oh, I'm still hungry I need to have a little bit more and then they start to think oh my god it's something that's happened to me when I was younger and I'm a nutcase and they go and see a shrink when they shouldn't go and see a shrink they just need to be in a different environment so um, yeah this is one of my pivotal, pivotal videos I absolutely love it I hope you're enjoying it and uh, let's move on in the next video I guess